Sports Museum of America opened up on Wednesday downtown. I know Joe Beningo was there. It says it's a fantastic place to go visit. So nice weekend. Come downtown, check it out this weekend. Hey, even if it's raining this weekend, come downtown. It's a good day to spend some time indoors and take a look. All right. We've got our daily list, and it got me thinking about the first articles that will be displayed at the SNY Museum when we open it someday. A Week 14 parlay sheet signed by Scotty Farrell. Nice. With every single game picked right, of course. Uh, number four on the That's list. fantasy. Chris Carlin's tie. Wait a minute. Chris Carlin doesn't own a tie. All right, we'll have to go back to the drawing board on that one. He doesn't. You know, he certainly doesn't wear one. Number three. Oh, Greg Buttle's socks. And we actually have a pair of those socks right here. And this is a true story, guys. Greg Buttle does not wear socks, ever. So Will O'Toole, the producer for the Jet Shows, he keeps an extra pair of socks in his desk. So if he ever needs to shoot, you know, from the waist down for Greg Buttle, he's got the socks oh. to do it. All right, number two on the list. I a a half-used bottle of Just For Men hair color. You know who that's for. Your beard is weird. Your stash is trash for Keith Hernandez. And then number one, anything. Well, could it be anything else other than Maz's mug? We've talked about it for so long. Here it is. It usually used to be Maz's mug. It's now my mug. Uh, he took it from me. I got it back from him. I'm sure tonight he's here. He's going to probably take it back from me again. So that would be our entry. Uh, John Urban from the Sports Museum of America is here. How's it going these first couple of days? It's going great. We're off to a big start. We had a, a great opening on Tuesday. Uh, shut down Bowling Green Park. We had the mayor. We had 25 superstar athletes help kick us off. Right. Joe and the guys were down and yep. uh, spending some time in the green room. And uh, it was just a, a wonderful tribute and a, and a great, uh, great kickoff. You know, one of the things I read about it, let's deal with the issue right now, yeah. is the cost of getting in there yes. was compared to some of the other museums, like the Museum of Modern Art and whatever, it's mm -hmm. more expensive. Right. Why is it worth it and why is the price so high? Um, actually, a couple of reasons. The, you know, by comparison to not just museums but other tourist attractions, uh, it's, it's actually quite reasonable. But the, the reality is, Bob, that you know, we're a new kind of museum. There's a level of interactivity in film and video, 21 original films, over 30 interactive, um, very engaging things for, for people to touch and learn and be part of, put you in the game. Um, there's also no service fees. There's no service fees and there's no additional fees once you get in the front door. So anybody that knows kind of the museum and attraction game, Often there's a bit of a bait and switch there that, uh, you know, convenience fees from your ticketing company and then, you know, another five or six or seven or ten bucks once you're inside to see the things that really matter. Yeah. Um, at, at SMA, it's, uh, it's a pay one price and, uh, and we get you in, you see everything. You know, one of the beauties of the museum, too, is that you guys are going to have the uh, Heisman presentation now. Used to be always That's at the nice. downtown athletic club and uh, you got a r terrific room in there. If you haven't seen it, you got a great room, pictures of all the Heisman Trophy winners. Little thing uh, honoring uh, Tim Tebow, who won the Heisman this past season. Uh, that's going to be uh, terrific for you guys. Yeah, well, we're excited about the Heisman. I mean, it's uh, it's certainly one of the cornerstones of the project and has been. I mean, uh, you know, providing a new home for probably what is the most uh, well-known and, and respected trophy in many ways um, in, in all of sports. Uh, the interactivity there, too, Joe, is, is terrific. You'll, uh, visitors to SMA be able to vote for the upcoming year's uh, Heisman contender. And uh, the compilation of all those votes actually will go in as one fan vote. We'll change out that display, with, uh, which is currently Tim right now, and, and update it every year in the museum to, to celebrate the current year's winner. So we're working closely now with, with the Heisman and with ESPN to, to figure out what we can do in terms of the presentation. How do you go about acquiring stuff for this? What, how does that work? How do you get your material, your exhibits, that kind of thing? The, the foundation, Bob, was, was these 60 partners. Um, to, to really, truly build a national museum of sports, you needed the buy-in of all of the governing bodies and the museums around the country. Uh, they all do single sports, but the idea of putting all sports under one roof in New York meant you wanted the significance and the credibility of doing it with their with their participation. So we have 60 partners now, USTA, USGA, USOC, Basketball Hall of Fame, football, you know, all these folks around the country who give us access to their membership, give us uh, entree to athletes, and in some cases have, have uh, contributed a, a great deal to our artifact collection. The rest of it is, is sort of, uh, you know, one by one outreach. We're reaching out to athletes and managers and parents and hometown papers. All right, John. Good to see you. Thanks, Thanks a lot. We'll see you down at the uh, museum. You got it. Thanks All very right. much, guys. Log on to SNY.TV and join our mailing list to receive a Sports Museum of America special ticket offer. If you're already a member, be sure to look for the ticket offer in the SNY.TV beat on Monday. All right. After the break, if Chuck Barris, Mean Gene, the Dancing Machine, and the Unknown Conic are near and dear to your heart, you won't want to miss Rush Hour. Stay tuned.